Today's podcast is all about skincare. What is a good, simple skincare routine that you should consider? What is a more advanced skincare routine? What are some of the hottest products out there? Maybe products that you don't need to consider using and even at home treatments as well. I'm gonna be joined by a master esthetician and we're gonna cover all things skincare. Um, so let me introduce my guest this week. Her name is Natasha Brinkman. She is a certified medical esthetician. She has a master's in medical aesthetics. She has her own online consulting business designing skincare routines and working with over 2,000 clients worldwide in the past two years. Uh, she is also a beauty blogger and online educator with over 1 million followers across the platforms. You may have heard of her. She is known as Beauty Junkie Monkey. The Beauty Junkie Monkey is going to be joining us on the Holistic Plastic Surgery Show podcast, where we're going to talk all things skincare. Let's do it. Thank you for having me. What an honor. So you are a skincare consultant. You have made uh, a lot of fans online, who people who follow your skincare recommendations. Uh, you are a medical esthetician. You have a master's in medical aesthetics. So let's start with kind of the basics. What is a skincare consultant and how did you get into doing this? Really rather by chance, actually. <laughs> uh, I love the skincare community. And for me personally, I love deep diving into the actual ingredients and finding out why they do what they do. Because when you've been in the industry, you know, you, you get the initial setup and, and then you have the, um, the people come by and tell you all about their products and why it's the best. And it's the only one that's going to work. And I found that very intriguing. But when you talk to different brands and different companies, you're always getting a different answer. But they're always saying the same thing. Ours is the best. So for me personally, what I like to do is deep dive into the ingredient list. And as I did that, it just kind of progressed. I'm like, oh, that works. Okay, I see how that would work. And then I started putting it on my face and testing everything to see how my skin responded. Now, not necessarily a scientific kind of a, <laughs> a platform, but it, it gave me a good reference of what to expect. And then, of course, it changed based on skin type. So if I used my family members who had different skin types, different ages, and really, it just kind of started from there. I did the um, education online because I noticed that there wasn't a lot of people talking about how to design a skincare routine. Everybody talked about the skincare, but they didn't talk about how you put it together, which ones you may not want to pair together, just, again, for irritation factors and so forth. And that's pretty much how it started. And then it came from one person saying, well, would you design me a skincare routine? And then another one said, can you do that for me as well? And it just evolved into my, my business. Now, you've had an interesting circuitous route to this place. Uh, at what point you were a police officer, you were apprehending criminals, and then next thing you know, you are uh, recommending skincare routines, and you've got a, a, an audience of over a million people across social media platforms. How did you go from being a cop to being a skincare specialist, a, a medical esthetician? Uh, that's an awesome question. So prior to being a police officer, I was a full esthetician. So, you know, I, I did what everybody else did. I went to school. I did my full aesthetics. Uh, I worked at spas and salons. I worked at the trade shows. Love the trade shows because you got to interact with everybody. Um, and then you just kept building and building. I worked for some schools. I had a really good time, but there was something in me. I've always wanted to be a police officer when I was a little girl. Don't know why. Just had to scratch that itch. And here, uh, where I live in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, they had changed their their uh, acceptances. So, you know, you didn't have to be a certain height or a certain this. And so I went for it. I'm like, I'm going to scratch this itch. I completely liquidated my entire company to do this. And I didn't make it the first year I tried. I actually, <laughs> I missed it by this much. Uh, so I went to animal control. I did animal control. And then finally I made it on. And of course I was in it, oorah, you know, guns a blazing so to say without actually doing that and i had a really good sergeant and his advice to me was he's like brinkman because that's my last name he goes one thing i got to tell you about this gig always keep one foot out of it and i'm like what and he goes yep he goes when you retire you're just going to be a retired cop so keep one foot outside of this world he goes keep your your friends keep your hobbies that kind of thing that really resonated with me and he was right after about eight years you know the oorah kind of started to go oh wow this is real life and don't get me wrong, loved what I did, but I started noticing I was missing the community. And then of course the internet opened up, things kind of changed. The way that people, you, you were able to obtain information changed. And so for me personally speaking, I'm like, well, this is fun. So I started doing it as a hobby on the side, doing skincare, researching, skincare, researching, you know, just small little groups, nothing crazy. 
And it literally just evolved. And then the last couple of years, it just turned into something bigger than I anticipated. And I felt like my policing career kind of ebbed. And then that was it. I was just like, I think I've given all I have. I was there for 15 years. I loved it. Um, learned a lot from it, had a lot of training in there. So, you know, it helped me understand people, situations, um, biases, which I use a lot in my skincare because there is a lot of bias. There is a lot of um, differences of opinions. And I believe that that world helped me understand how to navigate this new world. And so, yeah, it's kind of a crazy thing. But of course, being in policing for 15 years, I'm just like, I feel like I'm kind of need to get back in to this again. So I went and I took my master's medical aesthetics last year and it was intense, um, intense training, but I was really excited. It just helped confirm what I already had, but it also helped me see like through the laser treatments and the CO2 and the peels and all the advanced treatments that are now available that really weren't there when I was initially in it. And it just helped me take myself to the next level. So we're going to get into all of these uh, skincare routines that we're going to recommend as well as treatments. But before I do that, I've got a nagging question that I really need to ask you. And I'm sure a lot of people are wondering this who follow you. Why are you called beauty junkie monkey? I mean, a monkey, usually monkey is like a derogatory term. Like, why did you call yourself beauty junkie monkey? Well, everybody's a beauty junkie, right? And monkey is just because it rhymed. It was kitschy. It was funny. Um, I kind of grew up with the Curious George that was always in the back of my head. You know, Curious George was a monkey that went around those children books. And that's very much my personality. I'm curious about everything. I want to get my hands into everything. And it was a little bit of an homage, but really it was just because it was kitschy and, and people will remember that. And they do. All right. So let's talk about skincare because uh, I know a lot of people who are listening, who are watching this video as well, uh, wonder what do I do with my skin? You know, I get so many people that tell me, you know what, I go to Sephora, I go to Ulta, and there's so many products out there, it's overwhelming. Where do I start? So, you know, you being a medical esthetician, a skincare expert, if you had somebody come in and they say, look, I am skincare naive, I just use soap and water on my skin, I maybe put some Vaseline as a moisturizer, what is a good general skincare routine for adults of various skin types, you know, someone who does not have any major issues with their skin, but they want to just get on a very basic, easy skincare routine, what would you recommend for them to start with? Always a cleanser and a face cloth. Uh, I'm a huge advocate of a face cloth because it does help to really remove the oils. This is really specific for people with oily skin. So just a gentle uh, cleanser. I always tell people don't spend the big money on the cleansers. That's nice and juju poo poo. That's really lovely. If you have the money to do it, go for it. But really, you can do something as basic as the CeraVe, uh, the Cetaphils. Those are fabulous cleansers for people. You don't have to go too crazy, but do try to find one a little bit more based on your skin type. You'll have a better experience. The other thing I would tell people is stay away from toners. They're not necessary anymore. Back in the day, toners were really good because it helped to rebalance the pH. We had a lot of different formulas out there. So again, it's not a must have, it's a nice to have. Uh, but I like to stay away from using any of the toners with acids in it. Cause again, it's very simple to over process the skin. So it's like, yeah, we're good. We're good. Oops, exfoliated too much. So I tell people save your exfoliation for specific time frames, and then just, you know, just a cleanser. Then you're going to find a really good moisturizer, something that works with your skin type. And then of course, SPF all the way. SBF. That's probably the best thing I can tell people. It doesn't matter which one you pick. It's the one that you will wear. So I'm a, uh, somebody who had a basal cell carcinoma on my nose a few years ago. And yeah, that sucked. That was a really crappy experience, if I can say that. Uh, because initially when they did the whole, like, you know, how they do the most surgery, they, they cut it out. And initially I thought it was pretty good. But then of course my surgeon came back and he says, sorry, Natasha, we have to take out more. We have, it grew. So it, it's like a little... Uh, tree as they call it. So he scooped out a huge amount of this out of my nose and it, it was like an eye opener. I'm like, yeah, it may not kill me, but it can dif disfigure me. Right. So you realize later on when you, myself, I'm 49, you realize like I'm aging, but I want to age well and I want to take care of my skin and I want to take it to the next level. So if I could tell anybody, it's it's not a, a fad. It really is a fact. If you can protect your skin as much as possible, you're going to reduce the the drooping of the skin, the loss of the elasticity. Um, you're going to help with the tone and the texture, and of course, pigmentation, melasma. Um, some people are just prone to it, unfortunately. But the the radiation from the sun really is 
challenging for a lot of people. So I'm not saying don't enjoy the sun, but I call it have safe sun. <laughs> so you can take care of your skin, you know, good bougie glasses. If you love a good pair of sunglasses and that's going to make you wear them, do that. Do what works for you that you know you're going to do on a regular basis. And just building up those basics are just impressive as far as I'm concerned. That's all you really need. Okay. So that's the morning. Um, so you cleanse, you recommend a moisturizer and then a sunscreen, uh, SPF. Yes. I'm assuming 30 or more. Absolutely. If, okay. uh, and then how about the evening? I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, if you can throw in an, uh, a vitamin C, uh, I think that's also critical for any skincare routine. Vitamin C can be a little bit of a tricky, I call her the diva of skincare because she can be a little temperamental for certain people and certain skin types. Um, and there's different versions that you can purchase based on different skin types, which I, of, of course, teach on my page. Um, but a vitamin C is critical. It, it helps with collagen synthesis. It actually does help to do some protection during the day. The way I describe it, it's kind of like chain mail. It's not your armor like your SPF. It's kind of like the chain mail. It's going to protect a little bit and, of course, fight off the free radicals. But then when you put your, um, your SPF over top, I call that the Gandalf thou shall not pass you know you're gonna you're gonna have some awesome protection on that yeah and I 100% agree you know I think there actually are some studies that show if you apply an antioxidant serum like vitamin C to the to the skin you can get some minor skin protection from it unfortunately some people have taken that uh, and have said oh, well if you if you do that then you don't need sunscreen and that's just not true because the, the protection that it provides is not it's not meant for that um, and so 100% agree with you. I think that's very helpful because now you're going to target all those neutralizing the free radicals that you can get from other sources too. You know, you get free radicals actually from the sun. That's one of the ways that the sun damages the skin, uh, but also free radicals from pollution and automobile exhaust and ultra processed foods and all that type of stuff as well. Absolutely. All of that. Um, okay. So wholly agree. Um, morning, that's what I would recommend as well. So how about in the evening for a simple skincare routine? somebody who has not really been doing a whole lot, what should they start with? Definitely, I would start off with, again, same thing, a good cleanser. Uh, this is where it would depend on where they want to go. I love peptides. I really do. There's some really good ones out there. It's uh, a great way. They're, you know, short short chain amino acids, they go in there and they just help to plump and, and zhuzh the skin, as I like to call it. Um, I like the ordinary because they're, it used to be called buffet. Uh, that one I used for years in my 30s, and I loved it because it just gave me that plumpness. I have dry, dehydrated skin. So for me, that was just a nice little plumper. Uh, definitely would be great for you to start getting into a retinol of some kind uh, just to get your skin climatized because the sooner you get that in there, the better the cell turnover is going to be. And I find that um, a really good retinol over the counter is great. And as you progress, you can move up to a retinaldehyde, and then you can progress up to full strength tretinoin should it suit your skin and your needs? Because Tretinoin is, she's another diva and she's not for everybody. <laughs> no, definitely not. Um, okay, so anything else in the evening or is that all that somebody needs to really focus on is the cleanse and then peptides and uh, retinol. Do you know of any formulations that combine the peptides with the retinols that you like? Oh, I love a lot. I have to I have to say my, my introduction to Matrixol, which was from Depology, uh, was I think what pretty much made me go viral that I think was two years ago. And it was just because I had never been introduced to that ingredient. And they, you know, they sent it to me, say, here, give it a shot. I'm like, mm, okay, you know, and I threw it on my face. And after a few weeks, I'm like, holy moly, this has really changed my skin. And I was in my 40s then, uh, well, still am. And I found it was just like, wow, okay, wow, I need to look into this a little bit further. So, you know, I start deep diving into it. And I was just like, this is fantastic. And it was ironic because when I looked back at the buffet from the ordinary, it had Matrixel in it, but it had, you know, a plethora of other ones. But on its own, I was just like, holy moly, this stuff is fantastic. We need to talk about it. People need to hear about it because I found it just took my retinol and it boosted it. So for me personally, if I can find um, any skincare products that have a little bit of Matrixel, like there's different forms, Matrixel 3000, Matrixel, Matrixel 6, Matrixel Morphonics, which works on the verticals. If you can find a nice blend of all three, especially if you're in your, you know, laters and you're starting to see a lot of that fine lines and wrinkles, that's what I recommend. Um, like I said, I think Topology is kind of the goat when it comes to peptides. They really know their formulation. You're getting a hell of a good bang for your buck. I think that's probably why I talk about them a lot, because like I said, you get a good bang for your buck. I want value, but I, if I can avoid paying $200 for a serum, I will. 
Yeah, so you and I are both fans of Depology. It's a Korean company, and Matrixel 3000 is interesting because you know you're mentioning peptides, and so the way I look at peptides is that they're cellular messengers, and they basically message our skin cells to create more collagen. And we know that our collagen are, decreases as we get older, especially women after menopause. There was a study showing that within the first five years after menopause, women lose literally 30% of the thickness of collagen in literally just five years. And so focusing on just like what you said, retinol that can help with the, with promoting collagen and Matrixel 3000, which is a great peptide. I 100% agree with you. A uh, great product line uh, as well, uh, Depology, uh, to help to promote that collagen synthesis. And I'm assuming that's one reason why you're seeing the plumpness of your skin. Oh, absolutely. And I'm even going to say, I think in perimenopause, I call it lovingly the face dump, where you're just doing your regular everyday thing. And then all of a sudden your face starts to fall and you're like, what the heck just happened to me? I've been, I've been loving you. I've been loving you. Why are you, why are you deceiving me? And that's one of the things that happens in perimenopause as well. I'm definitely in it myself. So I can speak firsthand on my experience and it sucks. So for me personally, if you're in your thirties, mid thirties, cause you know, perimenopause can start a little bit early for us. Uh, I certainly started early. I started in my 40s, didn't even realize it. Um, but when I started doing that and I, I started using the peptides, that's when I was introduced to Matrixel. So that's why it made such a significant difference for me. So for me, it's not just Matrixel. I do love a good Argyro line for people who want to do a little bit more of the Botox free aspects. Because, uh, of course, as you know, Argyro line is that neuropeptide that tells the muscles not to move as deeply. And I can say with apps like Botox free, filter free, as I always tell everybody on my videos, um, it does work. It does. Does it get rid of it completely? Absolutely not. But it does definitely softens the fine lines and the wrinkles. And when you pair those two bad boys together, it's glorious. So, you know, if you need a little bit more zhuzh in your nighttime skincare routine, highly recommend that. So Natasha is talking about perimenopause and these changes in the skin. And if that's something that um, is happening to you and you're interested in learning more about it, I did do a podcast uh, with my good friend, Dr. Mary Claire Haver, uh, a few weeks ago. So take a peek at that podcast episode where we talk all about menopause, the changes in the skin, the changes in hormones, different treatments that you can do. It is super, super informative. Uh, and then a week before that, I did a podcast on the menopause skincare routine, uh, the skincare routine that I recommend. Uh, when women are in perimenopause and postmenopause, that is different than the skincare routine that you may want to consider prior to going through menopause, because you do want to focus on really trying to push uh, that collagen and the fact that your skin does get thinner. And just like Natasha says, it's crazy in those first five years when you're going through perimenopause, how it feels like, unfortunately, your face can drop like that so quickly. And that's that 30% reduction of collagen that happens so quickly in the skin. Um, now, there are a lot of ways to naturally uh, improve that. And once again, I went over it with uh, in a few podcasts ago. So after this podcast is done, I would encourage you, if you want to learn more about menopause, take a look at the podcast a few weeks ago. Um, okay, so that's a very basic skincare routine. You did mention Argyroline uh, as a potential additive. If you're more of a skincare enthusiast, are there other steps that you would add for those people who are like, okay, yeah, I know this. This is kind of great basic stuff. I've been doing that, but you know what? I love doing a skincare routine. What can I add to my skincare routine that can even help uh, bring it even better than, than you know, the, the basics that we've covered already? Oh, that's that depends on budget because <laughs> there's a lot of professional products out there that work exceptionally well. Um, I, I'm just uh, telling my viewers about the anti ash system, which uses uh, stem cells and cytokines, which have been incredible. Uh, it's, I think it's going to be the next level in skincare, personally speaking, because, you know, you have your base, which is your retinols, your vitamin Cs, your other antioxidants, niacinamide, so love that one. Uh, and then, of course, your peptides, those are kind of your base. Then, you know, if you go into the Medispa versions, you're looking at things, uh, treatments like the PRP, um, so the plasma rich platelets that people were using, or doing the vampire uh, facials to use their own platelets to try to stimulate that collagen. And uh, now we're starting to see the growth factors and cytokines coming into play. And I'm like very excited. Myself, I've been using the anti ash system just on its own. So I test everything before I actually talk about it or or promoted as people would say. And I have to say that has been an absolute game changer. I still pair it with my vitamin C's, right? Or sorry, it has a vitamin C. I still pair it with my peptides because it does have matrixel. 
but I'm, I'm a greedy girl. I want my copper peptides. I want my Ajira line. So I'm, I'm going to make sure I use that in there. Um, and then I still use, it does have a healthy amount of bakuchiol, which is, of course, a retinal derivative of vitamin A, which is great for people who are very sensitive to retinoids. So you can just use that on your own. However, you can use an additional retinoid with it. And as you can see today, I, I've got beautiful volume in my face. I'm really, really happy because when this starts to drop and you start getting the jowls, oh, that's depressing. That's, it's very challenging to age because <laughs> you see yourself in your youth. <laughs> Skincare wise, and what do you recommend if somebody says, yeah, I'm starting to notice some looseness of my lower face and my neck area. Um, is there anything different than what we have talked about here that you find that may actually help with tightening up of the skin? Um, or is it going to be what we've talked about, like retinol and, and the peptides and all? Well, those I think are the I, a key pillar, I think, is the, the best of the best, because the earlier you start that, the better the quality of the skin. Uh, so if we can keep those two components being stimulated in that fashion by the peptides and the, the retinoids. I think that's the best place to start. And then should you need more? then it depends on budget. Like I said, you can go into the growth factors um, or you can start doing things like microneedling. They really help to stimulate collagen production. It's not as expensive as some of the other stuff. I'm surprised we're, we don't do more microneedling uh, for people because it is affordable. Depending on which serum you're using, you can use, again, your PRP, your growth factors. You have lots of options for that. And you can do a couple of series at the beginning of the year, a couple of series at the end of the year. And it's kind of like um, doing a tune-up, you know, just zhuzhing, breaking up some of that uh, pigmentation that can come with it. There's those kind of things that you can do just a little bit here and there. Um, but yeah, like I said, the peptides are a big one. And I think once you start pairing them with your retinoids, you're really going to start to see a difference. And then if that's not enough, then you can look at the cytokins and growth factors. What do you like for treating unwanted pigmentation? Mm, that's a, ooh, that's fun. It depends because pigmentation is deceiving. Um, and it looks like it's on the surface of the skin, but really, it's really quite deep for some people. And it depends. Is it melasma? And perhaps the melanocytes are just kind of... How about more just spots? Yeah, like just spots. Oh. Yeah, age spots, sunspots. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So for that, definitely your vitamin C. You could do a complete podcast just on melasma. Uh, that's a whole other deal. Uh, but let's say somebody's got age spots. They've been in the sun a lot. Um, you know, those spots don't go away unless you actively get rid of them. Are there any products that you recommend for your followers? Oh, yes. Uh, and your clients uh, that has really helped them with the spots? Absolutely. You know, it depends on if you want like an all in one serum. Um, I do like the herbivore. They have a really good texture, heckledecal ascorbic acid with alpha arbutin and it has T chebula, which is a powerful antioxidant. Love that stuff. I think they call it chebula in, in the States. I call it chebula or chub chub. That's my favorite word for it. <laughs> but it's a really good product. It's like it's a Canadian, the Canadian uh, uh version of the word then that's all good absolutely um i love that product because it kind of hits some of the key factors to help reduce the pigmentation works very very well but some people need a little bit more um you can pair your niacinamide and your vitamin c niacinamide is also a very powerful antioxidant it helps to lighten and brighten the skin helps to fortify those cells itself so you know especially as we're aging our cells and our skin starts to kind of sag and drag so using a good niacinamide in your skincare routine something that's already in it is is excellent as far as i'm concerned when you pair it with your vitamin c um what else like i mentioned the alpha arbutin you can do that route uh transmatic acid that's excellent kojic acid licorice roots for me personally, when I'm dealing, it depends on the level of the pigmentation. So, you know, sometimes just a vitamin C niacinamide combo works like a hot dam. Sometimes you need a little bit more, like I said, the transmatic. But then, you, then now you're playing with different formulas that can be a little sensitizing to the skin. So it's really important if you do decide to do two of those at the same time. And again, keep the percentages within reason, right? So if you're going a high 25 vitamin C, well, I hope your skin is is tolerant, is going to be good because that's going to be strong to the skin, especially if it's an acidic form, right? That can be hard. And then if you use a transmatic acid, that can be really sensitizing to the skin. And like I said, it doesn't happen overnight. It's like, it's good. It's good. Oops, too much. My skin has overprocessed. So what I do is I slowly teach people how to put it into their skincare routine and slowly build up to it, just like you would a regular retinoid. So if you would recommend like one specific brand, I know you mentioned niacinamide, uh, which I think is just like you mentioned, great for uh, as a brightening ingredient. But is there a product then that uh, a relatively inexpensive uh, product for brightening of the skin that you recommend that people maybe look at that's worked well for your clients? 
Oh, yeah. So again, going back to Dipology, they have a really good version uh, that works really well and it's paired perfectly together. So their vitamin C is meant to be worked with their NIT dark spot correcting serum. That stuff works like a hot damn. That's one of my favorites. Again, price point, it's fantastic. You're you're not spending $200 a bottle. I think they're around the $40, $50 mark. Very affordable. Um, and again, they're meant to be worked together. So if you are looking at dark pigment and, and discoloration, it's best in, in my opinion, to use uh, two from the company that you're going to go with. Like I said, Dipology, they have a solid vitamin C at NAT. They're designed to work together. Those ones really help with pigmentation. And other companies have different uh, products that you can pair as well. I just prefer not taking a dark spot serum from one company and pairing it with a different vitamin C because you just don't know how strong the ingredients really are within it. Is there any products in skincare that you find are overrated or uh, that maybe are fairly popular or that um, your clients have been using and that maybe you encourage them, hey, maybe go off of that and let's try on a different direction? Exfoliates. Exfoliants are really, that's the bane of my existence when it comes to skincare because again, exfoliants are so important. And I, I will say that there is a skin type that you can definitely use an exfoliant a low level exfoliant every single day. However, you don't need to. And that's the part, you know, the bottles are always going to say, oh, you can use it every day, build up to twice a day, every day, but not everybody needs that. And depending on how you're building your skincare routine, some products don't pair well together. And of course, nobody's going to tell you that. So it's kind of a hit and miss. And the last thing I want to do is have somebody have a compromised skin barrier. We have to stop all the actives, let their skin repair, and then we have to slowly put it back into the skincare routine. And that can take a week, two weeks. Nobody wants that, right? So for me, the biggest thing is I love a good exfoliant factor. I'm a huge fan of AHAs, BHAs. I love azalic for the, the gentle, um, you know, people that have rosacea or, or very delicate skin or mandelic acid, another unsung hero. Like there's love those, but I would caution you on using it daily I think the best is a two, maybe three, depending on your skin type and the thickness of your skin also plays a factor uh, when you're talking about exfoliants because somebody like myself who has thinner skin, uh, I would not want to use something so aggressive every single day because that can just compromise my barrier very quickly. But somebody with thicker skin, they can, you know, I, I call it throw the kitchen sink at them. You can throw the kitchen sink at them and, and their skin loves it, you know? So you have to be mindful of, of your limitations of your skin. Yeah, I think it's important to realize if you are not happy with your skin and if it feels like it's irritated, uh, if you feel like your skin is red, is irritated, the first thing you want to look at is, okay, is there something that you are doing to your skin that is irritating it? Uh, because oftentimes people come to me, that, yeah, you know, I'm not happy. I've, I've got these breakouts. My skin's so irritated. What product should I add to make it better? And it's like, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute what are you using? And oftentimes they're like using nine different products and this one they just started and they stopped and this one they started and stopped. And so usually I tell them, look, you know, it's possible that you could be over exfoliating, like you said, and maybe getting back to the basics is what you want to start, you know, get back to, uh, and then gradually work these other things in that way. It's almost like you're doing like an elimination diet, you know, where, Hey, let's really clean up the diet and then add things back in to figure out what is it that's causing you this problem. And, and that way you can really diagnose that issue. So I 100% agree. Um, all right. How about you? So we've talked a lot about skincare products. You've given a great skincare um, regimen and have recommended some great products as well. Do you recommend any at-home treatments? There are a lot of devices out there that people are using now. Are any of those ones that you recommend that your clients try or use? Yes, I, I, I'm a cheap bugger. So if I can find something I can do at home, uh, I will go for it. I, I do love the red light therapy masks. I think they have a lot of potential for myself. When I was testing, I tested out two different brands and I just like, wow, this stuff is amazing, especially if you have breakouts. Um, uh, obviously, if you suffer from acne or even a delicate skin like rosacea, I love the red light therapy mask. They work exceptionally well. The, the caveat with those devices is that when it comes to using them, you have to be consistent. So at least 15 minutes, depending on the device, and of course, the, the intensity of the light. Um, the little guys just, I, in my humble opinion, are just not strong enough based on my experience and my training. Those handheld wands, uh, you, you want to have the light directly on there for a period of time. And this motion and movement, it's just not enough to make a real effective change. 
But I'll tell you, when I start using my red light therapy mask every morning, so you, you know, you wash your face, you put your mask on, uh, you let it do its thing, and then you put on all your, as I call them, lotions and potions, and then you're ready to go. But you want to use them at least five days a week. So I always tell people, if you are interested in those devices, be mindful. Do you have the time? Because it's, it's an investment. But there's some really amazing ones out there, out there, and I love them. I think they're really effective. They work. Yes, they do. They are going to enhance your skincare routine. They're going to help with the skin, pick the skin up. As to how much, that depends on your skin, how much of your elasticins have been kind of stretched past the point. Uh, but yes, I find them very effective. The, the ones that stimulate your muscle movement, I, I don't believe in those ones. I've tried many versions. I, they're just, just not strong enough. Right. As, as you know, as a doctor, you know that you have clinician strength and then we have over the counter and it's never as strong as what you can get in, cl in clinic. And that's where I think there's some, you know, if it works for you, awesome. But is it something that I recommend those devices? No, not at all. But I do love a good microneedling. I love a good microneedling. They, there's some mm, there's some good stuff out there. Um, so again, something you can do at home. The microcurrent is interesting because there's very few, there's very little science about them out there, but there are people who do appear to get a nice improvement. Although longevity is a big question. You know, I think that there's so many videos that you see where somebody does a new face on half their face and it does look a little bit lifted. Uh, and that does make sense that it would do that. But long-term, are you getting anything from it? The answer is, we don't know, you know, the, you know, it's the, there's, I haven't seen studies for or against it, technically. I just don't think there are hardly any studies done. Uh, and I totally agree with you with the red light therapy. Just that one little thing that I've tried to, you know, it's hard because I'm busy as you are, and I'm a surgeon, and I operate two days a week. I see patients two days a week. I've got all this social media and podcasts and videos and stuff. And so it's like I try to find time to do the red light therapy too. And what I figured out is, okay, the way I'm going to try to do it, and I have started, and I've been so-so with it, is to, uh, and I've got a current body mask is the one that I wear. Uh, it's a 10 minute treatment. And I've always said, look, I really want to try to take 10 minutes every day to meditate. So I'm like, well, why don't I multitask and I will wear the red mat light mask. And while I, I have it on, I will meditate for 10 minutes. And I don't even have to set a time or anything because it shuts off after 10 minutes. So I know when the 10 minutes is done. Um, but admittedly, my consistency with that has not been great. Although I'm lucky because I've got an office, we've got lasers and IPL and all this stuff that I can do. Uh, and so typically I would do those types of things instead. But I 100% agree with you. I think if if you are somebody who is on a budget and gee, spending $2,000 on IPL treatments or laser treatments is really difficult, then you know investing in a nice a uh, red light therapy, either a mask or a tabletop device, you know, a panel, I think is great, great money well spent. And I also agree with you that these handheld devices, you can buy them for $20 on Amazon. They're cheap, but I mean, literally for them to work, you're going to have to spend, you know, an hour, maybe more than that each time, just putting it over your face. And if you've got all the time in the world to do that, then go ahead. But most of us, like after about 10 minutes, like, okay, I think I'm done. Uh, and, and, and just like you said, you need to do it for a long time and to spend that much time moving this thing around, you know, if you can just spend the extra few hundred dollars, get something that really works that you can put it on your face for 10, 15 minutes and meditate while you do it and, and not have to worry about all that other stuff. I agree a hundred percent. Like I said, when I take it out of my skincare routine, when I'm testing new products, I take everything out and I just use those products and I do see a little, a, a digression in my skin and I'm just like, oh, I miss that. But it's, it's nice to know because it just keeps reaffirming you like, yes, this is a good solid investment if you choose to do so. But like you said, that's the time and your lifestyle, right? If you're busy, it's challenging to get it in. So we are uh, going to finish up here pretty shortly. We are running out of time, but I want to do a quick rapid fire with you, Natasha, uh, of kind of hot topics uh, on social media and whether they are a uh, thumbs up or thumbs down from you. Uh, and we'll see and just do a quick comment on each of these um, because I think they're quite interesting. OK, so there is a recent trend towards a term called prejuvenation. And the idea is you want to prevent aging. And it's something that now is even extended into preteens. Uh, do you think that preteens should get into skincare uh, or should they just stick with uh, soap and water and, and what in general preteens of the past have done? How old are we talking when we talk about preteens? Uh, I would say 10 to 12 years old, that type of thing. Thumbs up. And here's, here's my good skincare, teach them young. Because you know those hormones are going to kick in 
And if you can start them on something really simple and basic that they're excited about, they're excited to be part of this world, invite them in, but also teach them. I think that's what we're missing is we're missing that, that mentorship, mentor these beautiful people, help them understand that a good skincare routine is excellent. If they're excited about it and they want to take care of their skin, hallelujah, because it's going to help prevent a lot of issues down the road or at least stay ahead of it. So I'm, I'm pro good skincare. Just again, be mindful of it. How about skin cycling, skin cycling, a thumbs up or thumbs down. And what do you think of it? I, I do love a good skin cycle. I think it has its place, especially if you're doing like a treatment type of a cycle. So skin cycling can be different versions. You know, um, some people do skin cycling of treatment. Some people do skin cycling of different ingredients, especially if they're trying to treat like hyperpigmentation, melasma, that kind of thing. I think it's fantastic. It has its place. Do you need it every single day? No, not really. Your, your base is perfect, but I, I am a fan of, of skin cycling. All right. How about slugging? Do you like slugging? Is that a good practice for your skin? Uh, and so for these, those people listening today uh, and they're like, what is slugging? Uh, slugging essentially is when you apply a lot of an occlusive moisturizer, like let's say Vaseline onto your face at night. And the the belief is that you wake up in the morning, you clean it off, your pillow's a mess, but you clean it off your face and your face is just moisturized and like soft as a baby's butt. Uh, what do you think about slugging? Love slugging. It, like you said, it's a hot mess though. I prefer skin glazing, which is using an oil based on your skin type. So even if you have oily acnetic skin, there's some amazing oils that you can use that super hydrate the skin. So for me personally speaking, hydrated skin is happy skin, even if you're oily. There's a difference between oily and hydrated. And for me personally speaking, I love a good slug, but skin glazing, even better. So a lot of guys are out there saying that mewing is a way to go. Does mewing work? Do you give that a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Describe the mewing. Sorry, this one's new to me. Okay, so mewing is this belief that if you lift your tongue to the roof of your mouth and you exercise that type of muscle, that you will get a snatched neckline eventually afterwards. I'm sorry. So she's saying thumbs down here. I'm saying thumbs up. I'm sorry. It, it's not because it's not... Um... It's, it's a muscle, right? A muscle is going to be nice and firm, but the sag and drag comes from, you know, the skin. Sometimes it's a structural thing, just you're predisposed to it. Um, do I think that holding it on the roof of your, is, I know, feels gimmicky. It, it is. So yeah, I agree. I'm the same thing. There is, there is our people who are saying, oh, if you do that, that, that that's going to change permanently the architecture of your neck. And I don't see that either. So I think we're in agreement there. Uh, so my guest this week is Natasha Brinkman. She is well known online as the beauty junkie monkey. And you can find her on TikTok, on Facebook, on Instagram. She has over a million followers across the platforms. And her website is beautyjm.com, beautyjm.com. Uh, if you are interested in a personalized skincare um, recommendation. Uh, can you explain how you do your consultations uh, for those people who are listening today? Yes, I do them all through Zoom. So uh, I'm worldwide and basically you, you go into my appointment book. If you see an opening, grab it. Uh, it will show you your actual timeline in your country, so where you're at. And then what we do is we do a 30-minute face-to-face and we talk about your skin, your concerns, what your goals are. And I design your routine specifically to you based on your needs and where you're at. So that's what I do specifically, but I also do offer um, purchase. You can purchase the skincare routine itself, and then you can just purchase your own products on their own. And I give you tons of suggestions to, to work with that so you can build your own skincare routine in a safe, effective uh, manner. So I also, I also offer both options for people. So Natasha is an expert at skincare. Like I said, you can find her at Beauty Junkie Monkey on all the different platforms and her website, beautyjm.com. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. This was a lot of fun. Thank you so much for having me. It's a true honor to finally meet you face to face. And I just, I really respect all the work that you do and all the teachings and the humor you bring to it. Thank you for that. Uh, this, this industry can get a little stuffy and professional. So you bring a, a breath of fresh air to it. So I, I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. Well, you're fantastic. And on everybody who's listening, if you're interested in kind of revamping your skincare routine, if you wanted to hear from uh, an expert in skincare, somebody who can really 
get to the bottom of what's going to work well for your skin, then I strongly encourage you to do a consultation with Natasha at beautyjm.com. Uh, you can do it via Zoom. So anywhere across the world, she can help you. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening. If you've been enjoying my podcast, if you can leave a rating or review on iTunes, it definitely helps me spread the word. Otherwise, I'm Dr. Anthony Yoon, known as America's Holistic Plastic Surgeon, and this is the Holistic Plastic Surgery Show. Thank you so much for listening and for watching. And remember, as always, eat real food, use clean skincare, and auto-juvenate before you operate. Thank you.